Hi, I'm Chris Robertson, Master Instructor for Best Incorporated. In this video, I will present the changes between the IPC A610G and the newest revision, H, of the Acceptability of Electronic Assemblies document. The IPC A610H was released in September 2020. As with all IPC revisions and updates, there were editorial changes and typographical corrections throughout the document. This video will focus on the major technical changes, those where the criteria was changed, updated, or added. One big change that happened throughout the document is the removal of the target condition. Target is and was the goal. It's near perfect and what should be strived for in all electronic assembly operations, but it's not really a condition as our acceptable process indicator or defect conditions. Another global change is the clarification between lead, the metal element, and lead, the connection device on a component. These two words were confusing to some users of the document, especially those with English as a second language. The words lead, lead-free, and tin have been updated to the element abbreviations. Lead becomes PB, lead-free becomes PB-free, and tin becomes SN. Moving on to the new terms and definitions, we next go to 1.8.3. The term common conductors has been added. This isn't a new term to the document, but the defining of the term is new in this revision. Common conductors are electrical conductors designed to carry an identical current, frequency, polarity, or potential. 1.8.4 has another addition that isn't new to the document, but is a defining of a long-used term. Strand diameter has been included in the definition of diameters. A strand diameter is the outside diameter of an individual metal filament used in a stranded wire. Engineering documentation, 1.8.6, has replaced the more cumbersome phrase drawings, specifications, technical illustrations, and other documents released by the designer that established the design requirements. The change is one that points to a more succinct language use throughout the document. 1.8.8 is again a phrase that's not new to the document, but until now has not been stated. Form, fit, and function is defined as an identifying characteristic that, if not met, would adversely impact the assembly. Anything that could cause the assembly to fail is said to have not met form, fit, or function. 1.8.11 adds the term kink. Most users of the document who speak English as their primary language would be familiar with this word, meaning a tight or abrupt bend in a wire or component lead that visibly reduces the diameter or thickness of the conductor and cannot be removed by straightening. When the 610 and other documents are translated, words like kink do not always translate well. By adding the definition, the committee is helping users understand a bit of American English slang. The last new term I'll mention in this video is the counterpart to common conductors. Since common conductors was added, it makes sense to add non-common conductors. In summary, non-common conductors are those that do not carry the same charge or frequency and should not be connected. Paragraph 2 has been reorganized and new other referenced documents have been added. Paragraph 3, Handling of Electronics, has been moved into Appendix B. The content of the section is good information, but there's no criteria or requirements in the section. As such, it's better as an appendix. Jumping now to 4.1.5.2 and 4.1.5.3, where previously wrapping of wires to a threaded fastener was a single section encompassing both solid and stranded wires. These two have now been split out. The criteria for each are the same, so no major change there. There has been the addition of illustrations that help the document user to envision the written criteria. Another removal from the document happened in 4.4, Wire Bundle Securing, and 4.5, Routing of Wires and Bundles. These sections have been taken out of the 610. The document user is instead referred to the IPC HUAMA A620 Requirements and Acceptance for Cable and Wire Harnesses document. For more information about the changes in the 620, take a look at the Best Incorporated video for the update from 620C to 620D. Moving now to section 5.2.9,
Cooling lines and secondary reflow have been given their own section. In previous revisions, these two were mentioned only in comparison to the disturbed solder anomaly. 5.2.16 is next on our list. Heat shrinkable soldering devices, with the criteria from the 620, have been added to the 610. These devices are heat shrink tubing with a solder preform in the center of the device and can have sealing rings at each end of the tube. These devices are used for quick splices of wires or leads. A new soldering anomaly has been added in the form of solder inclusions in 5.2.17. An inclusion is a foreign object debris item, but it's in the soldered connection. Anything or any object that penetrates or projects from the solder fillet is considered a defect condition. Paragraph 6, Terminal Connections, has remained mostly unchanged. Other than moving the bend radius table out of Chapter 4 and into Paragraph 6, there were no other major changes to Paragraph 6. Most of Paragraph 7 also remains unchanged. 7.2.2.2 added criteria for the adhesive bonding of elevated components that are taller than they are wide or long. This isn't really a new section, rather the clarification of adhesive bonding for components such as box capacitors. The criteria is the same as found in the J-Standard 001. One other modification to paragraph 7 is that the jumper wire criteria has been moved into a new section, paragraph 13. The same movement of the jumper wire criteria from paragraph 8, surface mount technology, has also been accomplished. Speaking of paragraph 8, there were a few changes and additions to the surface mount criteria. In 8.3.5, flat gullwing leads, it's had some modifications to the table and criteria. The criteria for maximum toe overhang has been split out, and the allowed overhang is now based on the length of the lead foot. When the lead is greater than or equal to three times the width of the lead, toe overhang is allowed, as long as it does not violate minimum electrical clearance. When the lead foot is less than three times the width, the table states that overhang is not permitted when the lead is less than one times the lead width. I admit the wording is a little bit confusing here. At the time of the video, I had a question out to IPC about this criteria. Until then, do your best to reconcile this seemingly contradictory criteria. Minimum heel fillet height has been combined. Where revision G had the minimum heel fillet criteria based on the lead thickness, revision H has gone back to a common criterion regardless of lead thickness. In previous revisions, flat lug leads and flat unformed flexible leads were in a combined section. Revision H splits them out. In H, flat lug leads is section 8.3.9, and flat, unformed, flexible circuit leads are in 8.3.18. The criteria for both type of leads remains unchanged. BTCs, or bottom termination components, in paragraph 8.3.13 has been added that the thermal plane can have up to 50% voiding if no other criteria has been established by the customer. Components with bottom thermal plane terminations, more commonly known as D-packs, have a slightly relaxed criteria in 8.3.14. That section now allows overhang of the thermal plane as long as all other criteria have been met. Data was submitted to the committee that showed thermal plane overhang is not a failure mechanism when considered as a single condition. 8.3.17 adds criteria for vertical cylindrical cans with an outward L-shaped termination. These components aren't new to the industry, but their use is widespread enough that they've warranted their own addition in their own section. The criteria are similar to other sections of paragraph 8, and the illustrations do a good job of helping to show some of examples of these components. Another new section is found in 8.3.19, Wrapped Terminals. These components have a wire wrapped around a support. That wire then forms the lead termination for the component. The wire is then soldered onto the assembly. Again, these aren't new to the industry, but they finally made it into the 610 document. Finally, in section 8.5.1, Surface Mount Connector Threaded Standoffs, or Surface Mount Fasteners, have been added. These components are typically mounted in an intrusive soldering process. 
That means even though these are technically through-hole components, they are instead mounted by putting solder paste on the board and then put through a reflow oven. The threaded fastener is used to secure other components to the assembly. One thing to note here is that there is no criteria established for surface mount fasteners for Class 3. Paragraph 9, Component Damage, had no significant changes. Subparagraph 10.6.2 has added definitions for encapsulated and entrapped. This is another addition where the terms are not new, but the committee has added definition to clarify the terms. 10.8.3 has been modified slightly to bring the coating thickness into alignment with other IPC documents and has added type SC styrene block copolymer. Type SC is an elastic coating used for adhesive and for environmental protection of assemblies. The rest of paragraph 10 remains unchanged. A change that seems to have been a long time in coming is the removal of the criteria for solderless wrap. No longer a widely used technology, the criteria for these connections refer the document user to MIL Standard 1130 for solderless wrap criteria. There were no significant changes to paragraph 12. Finally, paragraph 13 is now the jumper wire criteria. The criteria itself has not been modified from previous revisions. It's just been moved from the through-hole and surface mount sections. Take a look throughout the IPCA 610H to see all the changes and to ensure your assembly will meet the acceptability requirement in the document. I'm Chris Robertson. Thanks for watching. Visit and follow us on our YouTube channel, Soldering Geek, for more videos. For training classes, supplies, and more, visit our website, www.solder.net.